Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our previous video, we learned how to integrate JMeter with Dynatrace. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first before continuing with this video. In this video, we will learn how to analyze load tests using Dynatrace. So, without any further delay, let's get started. Before starting the actual load test, you need to ensure all servers and services are monitored using Dynatrace and are confirmed to be healthy. Okay. If any server is not monitored by Dynatrace, you should work with Dynatrace administrators to ensure it is monitored before starting the actual load test. In the worst case scenario, you may need to use other tools for monitoring this server. For example, if the server is running with Linux operating system, you can use any available Linux built-in tools to monitor it. Okay. You should monitor the server's CPU, memory, disk and network usage to ensure normal utilization. If you notice high utilization such as CPU usage at 90%, you should investigate and resolve the issue before starting the test. Without addressing this, the load test results won't accurately reflect the application's true performance. Okay? Besides server health, you should also check the single user response times. If the single user response time isn't meeting the SLA, then there is no point in applying load to the system. First, you need to troubleshoot and resolve the high response time issue. Once it is fixed, you can proceed with the load test. Next, you need to validate your application performance dashboards created in Dynatrace. You need to ensure that all the tiles in the dashboard display the data. If any tile is not showing the data, then you may need to fix that issue before starting the load test. Otherwise, you might end up in a situation where you complete the test without having sufficient data in Dynatrace for your analysis. Okay. It is always recommended to obtain access to the production Dynatrace environment if the application is already live. This helps you understand the application performance in real world situation. You can capture the metrics and compare them against SLA. If the SLAs are unrealistic, you may need to discuss with the application team and share the current production performance. This way, you can guide the application team to establish more realistic SLAs. Once you start the load test, you need to monitor the health of the servers and services. This helps you plan the next steps. For example, if you notice transaction failures continuously after 10 minutes, there is no point in running the test for the entire test duration. You can quickly analyze the root cause, stop the test, fix the issue and then rerun it. Okay. Many people especially those early in their careers might wonder whether they need to monitor the test continuously or just validate the results after the test completes. The answer is it is always recommended to intermittently monitor the test at least the first 30 minutes especially if the test is scheduled for midnight. If the test is scheduled during the daytime, you can monitor it while doing the other activities. You don't need to stop everything just to monitor the test. Okay. In real time, performance testers often work on multiple projects simultaneously. So they start the test and monitor it intermittently. After the test execution, you should capture the server's OS health metrics such as CPU, memory, disk and network usage. These metrics should be displayed on a dashboard allowing you to quickly view the server's health status in one place. You should also check the services response times, throughput and failures. Ensure that all the transaction response times are within the given SLAs, the target throughput is achieved and there are no failures. If there are baselines available, you should also compare the current test results with the previous ones to identify any performance degradation caused by the new changes. If your performance testing environment isn't identical to production, you can extrapolate the results based on the capacity and load simulated during the test. For example, if the testing environment is 50% of production capacity, ensure that you achieve 50% of production throughput during the test. One common question that I often ask by many people is how to troubleshoot when there is an issue in the test execution and how to identify the root cause of the issue in Dynatrace as the application team often expects the performance testing team to provide this analysis. Problems encountered during the testing can be related to either the application or the infrastructure. Sometimes application issues may happen due to infrastructure capacity limitations. From the application perspective, common problems that we may notice during the test is transaction response time is high. Most of the time, when load test is applied to the system, response times may exceed the given SLA. Okay, next application issue is throughput deviation. In the test, you may not be able to simulate the target throughput. For example, if the requirement is to simulate 100 TPS and in the test, you may be able to simulate up to 50 TPS. There could be several reasons for this deviation. Okay. When the transaction response time is high, then you may not be able to achieve the target throughput. Similarly, when there are so many failures in the test, it may also impact the throughput. Okay. Finally, transaction failures. Transaction failures may happen due to improper data setup or infrastructure issues, etc. For example, if you have multiple servers in the environment and load balancing is not happening properly, then all the requests may go to one server. In a short period, the server might be overloaded and new requests will be in queue. 
After some time, the transactions will start timing out which results the transaction failures in the load test. In Dynatrace, for any type of application related issues, you should go to services under the application observability. If the issue is high response time, navigate to distributed traces, identify any one of the high response time transaction or request and analyze where most of the time is being spent in the transaction flow. You can also analyze the response time or method hotspots to understand the problematic component in the transaction flow. If the issue is transaction failure, then you can go to dynamic request and analyze the root cause for the failures. You can capture the metrics and mention them in, in your test observations. Okay. For infrastructure related issues, start your analysis on the host page under the infrastructure observability. You can select the problematic server and validate its OS metrics and drill down further to understand the root cause of the issue. Okay. Improving your analysis skills takes time. It's not something you can master overnight. Okay. Always document the issues you encounter and their root causes. This information will be very helpful in the long run. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or want to share your experiences, feel free to leave a comment below. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. With this, we have completed module 7 and I will see you with the next module in this series. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.